visual artist, artist, yeah. educator. Um, and this is part of a project that started some years ago called DIA. DIA is an, it's a short form, an acronym for Diasporic Images of Africa, D-I-A. You'll see it on the slideshow. What is that? That is using visual arts primarily to show the connection between Africa and countries and cultures around the world. There is no country or culture I'm going to say, and if I'm wrong, bring them in, please school me, okay? But there's no country, culture, or culture, uh, or continent, because countries are part of continents, okay? That has not been influenced by African civilization and culture. And many times, the African culture and civilization is at the foundation of that particular country or culture. So I'm not going to talk too much more, but I'm just going to tell you about the theme. The theme this year, I choose them all the time. I've been doing these displays for about two years. The only presentations here in the library for a couple months. And I've done about three or four other presentations like the one you're experiencing now. Um, Black like me, each of you has a perception of what I mean when I say black like me. Even if you didn't see me, you couldn't see me, but you heard somebody say black like me. Well, you have a particular picture in your mind of what it means to be black. I believe it was Dr. Clark who said, black tells you what you look like, but it don't tell you where you're from. Hello. Or something close to that, okay? <laughs> I came up in the 60s and 70s. We proud to be black. Yeah, I'm black. It was only a couple of years prior to that. If you had called any Negro, colored person, whatever, black, move, move, move. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be on. So, but we went through the period, nation building, the civil rights era of the 60s into the 70s. That's where many, what we now call African Americans, decided we wanted to be called black. And then we moved on to Afro and African American and so forth. I'm not going to talk too much more because I can run my mouth forever. But the focus tonight is also, when you say African American history, well, let me ask you. When you say African American history, who are the African Americans? Somebody tell me. Well, who's an African American? Where did they come from? What is an African American? What country or countries? Do they come from? Where do African Americans come from? What country? Name a country. What country are we in? Ghana. Okay, Ghana. You might say that. I ask you why later. But what country are we in? United States of America. So, this is the only place called America in this Western Hemisphere? Also, oh, South America, Central America. The other two continents. And even on this continent where we, the United States, live, there are two other countries. To the north, they speak English and French. To the south, they speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. We forget that. So, but I want to show you, I want to show you the, uh, it's a seven minute slideshow. We can talk more later because time is ticking. So that's where we are, folks. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is just briefly, and then if you have any questions. Oh yeah, by the way, when I said Abu Bakari's people out of Mali, when they came over in 1350, looked like these folks. The only reason I chose them, they were probably a little browner, might have had uh, slightly different features, but you saw those three people, right? They were all black folks. Mm -hmm. The two on the right were Africans by way of Egypt. So, Mali is in Africa. I'm talking about people black like me. <laughs> so that, those were the only ones that I could find. Um, let's go over this just for a minute. Let's break the ice. Anybody know what the first one is? Number one, this um, Mavisa is and Kilomos. You know, you got to see it. All right, everybody talk at once. Just let me 
Quilombos, quilombos are garrisons. They come out of Palmeiras. Ah. They're out of Brazil. Okay. You got a, as a matter of fact, you <laughs> this, this is, this is a, a gentleman, my brother, who should actually be doing this presentation. <laughs> I, I should sit down and let him talk, really, because he's this very is, uh, This is uh, Carlos Diaz, Quilombo. This is the movie. Oh. So you can have that. Oh, and this right. one is uh, Sankofa. This is a wow. wow. But um, mm -hmm. the Colombos come out of, some of them come out of Brazil, some of them come out of Haiti, some of them come out of various, they were resistance movements that fought against the invaders in this day, the colonizations, you know, conquistadores, or you know, Portuguese, or so forth and so on. So, yes. Okay. And basically, because I couldn't say all of that, <laughs> it's J. Say it again. It's J. Yeah. Yeah. The Mambises is a term that Cubans use mm -hmm. for the oh, Maroons and the runaway slaves. Yeah. Yeah. slaves that rebelled against Spain, but they're similar depending on what language. And you heard what he said. He did the same thing. And the Maroons in Jamaica and all through the islands, mm -hmm. and even Maroons in America. Mm -hmm. We don't know how many times we've existed. Mm -hmm. And they lost. And we resisted. We wasn't happy. Just because we sing and, all, and we work it don't mean we happy. When I was in school, I used to whistle a lot, but I was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, number two, Mestizo. I think uh, Mestizo is um, I Spanish term for mixed Exactly. Right. Okay. Spanish term for mixed blood. Very good. Excellent. There you go. Uh, number three. You got um, Funa and the Darien. The um, African peoples of Central America, like the least. Very good. Uh, so that makes sense for us over there. Right, right. Yeah, and the Darien people I'm referring to are generally out of Panama. Central, uh, Central, 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 Central America. America. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four. Wait, so what one is more. It? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was it, Garifuna, uh, Garifuna, uh, it's F, 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 yeah, F, number two. Um, number four, more. Uh, yes, Africans have conquered and dominated the Iberian Peninsula and other parts of Europe. That's why this gentleman is here. This is called the Morris Chieftain. Of course, it's a poster, it's a reproduction of the original painting, but Moorish chief or Moorish chieftain. It is like him. Don't he look like me? Well, he's a little darker than me, but you know, <laughs> black like me. Um, I'm gonna keep saying that because, <clears throat> like I said before, we've gone through so many different incarnations, um, different incarnations and different names. And I agree with Dr. Clark that saying when you're black, they only tell you what you look like, and actually. Some of you, well, you all will get confused because you know me. But some other people will say, you know, what do you mean black? What do you mix with? Why don't you mix with something? On the continent, prior to any so-called mixing, we had all of the complexions, all of the phenotypes. Look it up. Don't believe me. Let's move on. Omen, number five. Go ahead. Yes. Hey, right, the Africans whose civilization is the foundation of Mexican culture. And even the Mexicans have admitted to this in their scientific communities mm -hmm. within the last few years at least. Mm -hmm. Number six, Morena. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, yes, a Hispanic term for a black woman. You hear it in the songs all the time. And doesn't it sound like more? Mm -hmm. Which we know, and in Spanish, although yo, hablo un poquito español. Marron is brown. It's right. a, a word for brown. So it's all related. This ain't by happen chance. It happens then. All right. Uh, number seven. Washington and the Yamasee. Is it? Uh, no, 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 no. I got to record myself. Wait a minute. Oh, I see it. The, Yam the Washington and the Yamasee. Anyone think? Do they know? C. C. Indigenous black. Indians, I only use the term because everybody's familiar with them, native to south, southeastern U.S. and the former Louisiana Purchase Territory. 
actually the two from the little information I know are very much related outside of being both black and native or indigenous groups. Carib uh, and the Arawak. Right, E, name of two of the earliest groups to populate the Caribbean. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Number nine. Okay. So, did anybody come? Oh, yeah. K. K. One of the three Yoruba spiritual practices transplanted to the Americas by Africans. Anyone know the other two? Santeria, Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the root. No, everything comes from the Yoruba. Or Yoruba. Santeria is one, Candomblé. Santeria in the Spanish speaking countries. Candomblé in the British, uh, I mean in the uh, Portuguese speaking countries, primarily yes, Portuguese. Well, uh, I mean, no, Spanish. Brazil. In Portuguese, Brazil. you have Mafumba. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but, um, Spanish-speaking areas, specifically um, Santeria, Yoruba, you know, various mix, but different mm -hmm. in Africa than in Cuba, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. those particular mm -hmm. versus Candomblé is a mixture of Dahomey. It's mm -hmm. different okay. in Yoruba. Okay, right, right. right. Dahomey is different. And, right. and, and Haiti with um, Budan. Right. Yeah, right. And, yeah, but Haiti also from Dahomey, you yeah. know, it's a different, complete different system. Mm -hmm. um, Nigeria South West, Kandangle and Yoruba, I mean, um, Voodoo mm -hmm. from Dahomey, that's northern Nigeria, closer to Benin. You know where Benin? Yeah. Next door. Right. Right. Same area. Yeah. Yeah. But all systems dealing with you know, uh, spiritual practices pertaining to uh, to um, Orishas and so mm -hmm. forth. And so on. Would it be correct to say that they come out of the Yoruba tradition? No, the reason that is is that it's a combination. Okay. And the reason that is is because what they do in the South and the North, yeah, they don't exactly. do. Okay. But see, in America, what they, what we did was we took them and mixed them. Uh -huh. So in Brazil, you have, you know, Macumba, you got, um, what do you call it? Um, 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 wow. uh, well, they use Candomblé and all of that, but they j just different system of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Where that in, in um, uh, Cuba and Puerto Rico, you know, they take Yoruba specifically, mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. But in Haiti, that's not only. That's Voodoo. Voodoo is very different. Well, I'll change it. I'll say they all came out of Africa. Oh, without a doubt. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so where are we? Oh, yeah, number 10. Guanahatabe mm -hmm. and Sibone. Mm -hmm. That's a head scratch. All right, <laughs> now, for those of you who were here for the Hispanic history presentation, you should remember that. No, I don't expect you to remember. <laughs> uh, the answer is the earliest indigenous people of Cuba, the Guanahatabe, from my research and the map I showed you, uh, were on the western end mostly of Cuba in the Havana area uh, and further west going that way. The Siboné were more in the central and the Taino also were there. And going back, I'm going to interrupt myself. The Carib, the Arawak, the Taino, a lot of these groups, you may have been talking about the same person. Our history and the history of people of color, Native Americans, the so-called red man, although we were there too. But anyway, and I'm sure in Asia, when you talk about India, nobody talks about, you know, when India was called the Hindu Kush. Why was it Kush? Where was Kush? Come on, you Christians, let's go. Oh! Bush was in Africa, mm -hmm. you see, in East Africa in particular. So, and they were the people, people coming out of that region who went to populate the area that we know as Pakistan, which was at that time all India or the Hindu Kush. But anyway, I, I've got a bunch of names. The Taino, from my understanding, it's, it's uh, the native mm -hmm. 
um, that were in Puerto Rico or they were all over. Because that's why I'm not clear. Because I know that Puerto Ricans are generally mixed with Taino, African descent, and uh, European. Um, and it's just not just the Puerto Rico? No, from what I've been reading, the Taino were all over the Caribbean. They may have been in different portions, greater in Puerto Rico than in other islands, but they were there too. And when they start talking about the Arawak and the Caribbean coming out of the Orinoco Basin, which I alluded to um, uh, Chavez being a descendant of uh, the Orinoco Basin people. <coughs> um, well, they always say the Arawak and the Caribbean. But then I read that the Taino came out of there too. So wait a minute. You got all these groups. And they may have been separate indeed. But once again, because our history many times, especially the status quo, <coughs> is so mixed up and convoluted that if you don't go a little deeper, and I haven't gone deep enough yet, <laughs> but you won't know these things, okay? Um, but at any rate, they all were there. Taino, Darawak, Lukai, these are different names generally that, although the Taino is a name given by them, but you know, this is uh, what, what we found originally before when Columbus got here. That's what we found. These are the people we found. And, mm -hmm. and we named some of them, I'm, I'm sure. Let's move on so we can get through this last one. Well, well, yeah, we're on time now. So that's a G. Large indigenous group that dominated the populations of the major Antilles. Major Antilles, of course, being a larger animal. But here is another article of evidence. This is more recent. That's something I have on the table. This came out uh, February 8th of this year in the Times. Is that? Yes. This is about Cheddar Man. Uh, you know, the skeletal remains they found. And of course, you know, uh, it was in the Little Town in Britain. You know, when they did the DNA, well, I don't know what we look like. But I think you could fall into this category of being not like me. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we all over the planet. I know there's a lot of intermixing. Let, let me just say this. I'm not trying to hold African descendants as the greatest thing since life but What I am trying to do is re-emphasize how, let's start with this, back in the late 80s. Not me, the scientific community. Most of them don't look like me. They decided that the earliest fossilized modern human that they could find was found in Africa, on the continent. Mm -hmm. They did the DNA, and of course, I think they found somebody even older. Okay? But they, I'm sure they're still looking. They still haven't found anything older than the ones they found in Africa. Okay, so just think about it. Okay. Actually, like Bob Marley said, we all have. I don't think the race call you stuff. It doesn't matter. Okay, you do have a different shape, different phenotype, all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. But the earliest ancestor of humanity was found in Africa. I'm not going to talk anymore. Nothing more to say. Okay? But there's so much information out there about everyone's culture the whole history that we have been fed, especially in America, but also around the world, because I met a young lady who was born and raised in Spain. And of course, I knew, this was some years when I knew, we asked her, I said, oh, well, uh, did they teach you about the Moors? She said, the who? I said, oh, mm -hmm. I might as well have been talking to my little ghetto brothers and sisters who don't know about the Moors, because I had to tell them to many of them too. What's this? You don't know about the Moors? You from Spain? Hmm. And in Europe, the Black Madonna is all over the place. Yes, you didn't figure is. that? So apparently they're lying in Europe. They're lying all over the world about the true history of humanity. Not to say anybody's better than them, but I'm saying this and this. Who do you want? You want the fake history or the real history? Because mm -hmm. if you go with the fake history, you'll never know who you are. You know, oh, well, I know I'm related to Harriet. Yeah. And Carlotta too, out of Cuba, and many others around around the world. But nobody's talking about that. 
I didn't learn to see how I was dying. I didn't learn until the last move. Well, a lot of this would be more recent, but I didn't really delve into our history. It's about 30 years ago. Why must our youth be ignorant for as long as I was? Because if they stay with the status quo information in the schools, oh, they will be. And then, of course, once you get to adult, you know, chasing the women, chasing the guys, looking to make a family, looking to make a living, you're not going to have time unless there's something in you that says, you know what, I never did like that. Let me see. So, there are many authors out there. One of the reasons I brought up uh, Arturo or Arthur Schomburg was because, like I said, he's an Afro Puerto Rican. We don't have any colored pictures of him, but you can see, okay? And if they leave this man back around the time of the first world war, he's on the library. And part of it was for segregation. Mm -hmm. But they recognize the vast amount of knowledge he had, documents, books, manuscripts. He had a library. I don't see too many others of us now who were probably near his intellectual capacity or maybe the same. Anybody giving us a library? I don't think so. Uh, but if I'm wrong, tell me. Okay. But I thought it was quite an achievement. I would, you know, like that. And it goes back to the fact that when you think of Latinos, especially if you are like, like me, African American, that's your brother and your sister. I'm here to speak another thing. They think like, like you too. So stop it. They're not outside your race. Actually, no one's outside your race because everybody African. Now, how do you like that? <laughs> okay. But, I point to him because he's very close. We have a large uh, Latino population, most of whom aren't Puerto Rican, but, you know, and when you look at the Latinos or Hispanic culture, it comes from many countries. And once again, we're only one of three countries in North America, the rest of the Americas. And whenever you go to the Americas, I haven't been to many of them. There are others that you are much better, uh, much uh, uh, better traveled than me. But when you see somebody walking down the street looking like boo boo or pork chop or that sister, that sister Louise, ain't it? Like this now. And she turns around and talks to you in Portuguese and Spanish and, and Pavimento uh, uh, or some other language. You say, baby, she not like me. Why not? She take you home, I'll get you a rice and peas. And you just you call them something else. It just tastes like what your mama made. Okay? And similar, a rice and bean, be it a black bean, a red bean, a pinto bean. Black Eyed Peas, it's all off being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about here? Okay? So I, I do these things because I think it's very important that we start to understand, number one, who we are. Number two, that everyone else understands. Mm -hmm. Because you may have gone to a very fine school, private school, most <coughs> of the teachers in, in your K-12, most of them, 75% of them had PhDs. Okay, great. Beautiful school, modern, millions of dollars, great. But you know what? They fed you the information from the same academic trough that they fed us, the poor of us. So we have to go outside. Go ahead. I'm opening up the question on the show. Yeah, now this is really more of a comment. Um, last spring, when I had the opportunity to travel to Africa with the Asian Park School System, the doctor recollected to this to Ghana. And we visited one of the uh, slave dungeons. And then what I learned from that experience is that there were more slaves who were transported by the Portuguese nation than any other. So even though we had a, a you know, our slave trade at so more of them were um, transferred through um, Portuguese. And as you pointed out in your film, the largest population happened to be in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Hispanic, I think we're just saying Hispanic because that's a language because how do you even define race anyway, you know? So I guess it's like, so you have to, in fact, even most of us came to the islands first before we were transferred into South Carolina or whatever. But if you end up staying in one of the islands or South America, you spoke Spanish because they were colonized by the Spanish. But in terms of a race, if you want to say it that way, we're kind of all the same. You know, because we all have the same same roots. 